Welcome to our annual Medical Teams International Healthy Women, Healthy World Luncheon. I'm Katherine Cook, your host for this afternoon. We hope you're all prepared to enjoy our online program. We're able to grab lunch and are ready to join us for our second virtual luncheon. We have an inspiring presentation to share with you today. But first, some quick tech tips. If you haven't done it already, we want to encourage you to grab another device, one for watching us here on our live stream, like a smart TV or computer, and then your cell phone. And now text CHANGE to 844-297-2727, and you'll get a link to start participating. That number is on the bottom of the screen here, so you can find it at any time. You can also email us at events at medicalteams.org. We also have a support team standing by to help with any questions you might have during the program. They can be reached via email at events at medicalteams.org or again by calling 503-624-6615. Okay, take a look at your phone. You should have just received a text message or email to help facilitate your giving later on. Also, if you're watching us on the Better Unite platform, you'll see the giving levels identified on the right side of your screen. Our theme today is United by Love, Celebrating New Life, Healthy Moms, and the Love that Connects Us. Now, to begin our program is Martha Spaulding. What an incredible person Martha is. She has been a member of the Healthy Women, Healthy World leadership team since 2016 and works tirelessly alongside her fellow leaders to be a champion for women and children around the world. Please join me in the following prayer written by Helen Manson, our speaker for today. She wrote it for her children. It is my prayer that it applies to each of us today. May you live loved all the days of your life, knowing you are loved by the creator of the universe and by us, your mom and dad. There is nothing you can do to forfeit that. May you know deep joy. May you stand when no one else does. Speak for those who cannot. May you know that when it comes to this world, there is no us and them. There is only us. May you have eyes to see the lovely in the unlovely, for that is so often where we see God. May you pierce darkness with light wherever you go. May you find it easy to forgive because you know the depth of your forgiveness. May you be kind, passionate, confident, and respectful, whether we're near or far, close or together. May you learn and relearn all that God made you for. May you fulfill your purpose in your generation. May you have courage above your peers. May you have more passion for the things of God than others think is necessary. May you dream more than others think is practical. May you expect more than others think is possible. May you rise up and go from strength to strength. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his face turn toward you and give you peace. May you be oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. You were made by God for such a time as this. Flourish, darlings, flourish. Amen. Thank you, Martha. We'll be introducing you to many more Medical Teams friends over the next 45 minutes. You'll be hearing from Medical Teams President and CEO Martha Newsom and our keynote speaker, Helen Manson, as well as our 2021 Humanitarian Honoree. But first, I would love to introduce you to the leaders of Healthy Women, Healthy World to hear why they are passionate about what they do. I really resonate with medical team's um, mission as a believer. Um, I feel that they're very engaged in what Jesus calls us to do, even in a different country, even in a different culture, a different environment. There are, there are basic human connections that we have. 
we are a community of women helping other women and that brings a lot of joy in my life and it also brings a lot of completeness where even though we sit in our homes that we can help someone else somewhere else around the world that doesn't have what we have because i have had the opportunity to travel to the field with medical teams and i have seen some of the conditions where women give birth and come to realize that had I been anywhere else, my daughter might not be here today because of the health safety we have here. Healthy Women, Healthy World is empowering women to help other women. And as a woman, that's very near and dear to my heart. It's very clear, like, how much you have in common. You don't have to go to Uganda to understand that the fears and the dreams and the hopes that you have for your family are exactly the same ones that somebody's having perhaps in a refugee settlement in Uganda. Women have a heart for other women. They have a heart for children. Um, they have a heart for a woman that's struggling and they want to help. I mean, that's why I was drawn. Wow, so inspiring. For those of you who are new to medical teams or even longtime supporters who want a reminder of all of the great work that they do around the world, we have one more short video for you. We live in a world where so many people are suffering simply because of where they were born. People die of causes that could have been prevented, illnesses that could have been treated. In Uganda, a pregnant woman is afraid of losing another baby. In Bangladesh, a refugee child is sick and scared. In Lebanon, a survivor of war feels hopeless and alone. These people are hurting, sick, in crisis. Pushed to the margins, they're forgotten, but not by us. At Medical Teams International, we go to the hard-to-reach places, places of turmoil, disease, and natural disaster. We deliver loving and life-saving care to people in crisis. Saving a life is as simple as prescribing malaria medication, providing emergency nutrition, administering a vaccine, helping a mother safely deliver her baby. The people we serve are more than patients. They are brothers and sisters, people with names, stories, and value. We treat them with love, sitting with them in their emotional pain as we care for their physical pain, providing comfort and compassion amid grief and loss. The people we serve are also committed, creative, and resilient, so we harness their strengths to improve health. We teach people how to seek out their sick neighbors, train local medical staff, make sure health facilities have the right equipment, supplies, and medicine. Because when a clinic is stocked with medicine, children like Haroon survive illness. When an operating room has the right equipment, mothers like Janet experience the joy of a safe birth. When a refugee is trained to care for the health of her neighbors, Women like Shaza are filled with hope. Together, we act. We heal. We love. Because every person matters. To God and to us. Every person matters. Wow, such amazing work. And now I'd like to introduce you to the woman leading the charge to act, heal, and love at Medical Teams International, President and CEO, Martha, Martha Newsom. Thank you. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for gathering with us this afternoon. I'm Martha Holly Newsom, President and CEO of Medical Teams International. 
So far in 2021, we've confronted tragedy after tragedy. We've seen violence and food security erupt in Tigray, Ethiopia. We've watched COVID-19 claim countless lives in developing nations and here in the U.S. And in just one painful week last one painful week this last month, we witnessed Afghanistan collapse into the Taliban's waiting arms. And we saw an already fragile Haiti shattered by a second devastating work, work earthquake. Suffering is deep and wide in our world today. There's no shortage of it. And as each dawn greets us with the news of another tragedy, these headlines speak of individuals that medical teams serves. The stories behind them tell of vulnerable people who are on the run and in dire need of basic human rights. You are here because you care about people experiencing crisis. You understand that disasters don't discriminate, that any one of us could be a woman fleeing from her home. One of us could be a mother without medicine for her sick child. If only we had been born somewhere else. As our world experiences a collective crisis, it's clearer than ever that there's no us and them. Today, as you hear about women from around the world, you'll be reminded of how much unites us. Right now, we're battling the same pandemic. We have the same wishes of safety for our children. We all want health for our families. At medical teams, we are called to care for God's vulnerable children by addressing criti critical health needs. We're called to serve in a way that honors, upholds, and restores the dignity and value of every human being. Because every person deserves love. Every person deserves a chance for health and wholeness, regardless of where they were born. Your presence here and the support you provide is reminding our sisters in crisis that they matter. You're doing something to heal the pain and injustice in our world. You're providing life-saving care because no woman should lose her life during childbirth. No baby should waste away without proper nutrition and no mother should watch her child die from a tre treatable disease. This work is difficult, but in the face of struggle and uncertainty, we find strength in our calling. Daring to love like Jesus, we boldly break barriers to health and restore wholeness in a hurting world. Jesus asks us to love the vulnerable. During his ministry on earth, he healed the people who are most in need, the lonely, the oppressed, the afraid. He saw the face of God in every person we meet, and so do we. When we look into the face of a worried mother caring for her sick child, we see God. When we meet a refugee carrying the wounds of war, we see God. When we treat a person who survived a disaster, we see God. Never has your support been more important than right now. A pandemic, natural disasters, war, these things only add to the life-threatening health crises that women and children face. Your support can help a situation that would have ended in tragedy, instead end in healing and hope. You can remind women and children we serve that they are worthy and precious, that they matter to God and to us. Each year at this annual fundraising luncheon, Medical Teams International honors a woman who is truly an outstanding humanitarian, a woman who reflects the values and calling of healthy women, healthy world, a woman who's compelled by compassion, committed to women and called to action. During this pandemic, we found new ways to connect more deeply with people all around the world. And that's true at Medical Teams too. We've improved our virtual capabilities and have become more connected to our global staff. With this in mind, our Healthy Women, Healthy World leadership decided to honor one of our amazing field staff with this special award. Our Humanitarian Woman of the Year for 2021 is Hamida Begum. Since 2017, Hamida has been making an incredible impact in her community of Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh. She's developed her skills as a community health worker, becoming a trusted and much loved member of her community. She's the person mothers call in the middle of the night if their child's sick. She's the one woman they turn to when they need help during their pregnancy. 
She provides comfort and hope to people who've lost everything. Hamida is tenacious in her work. She visits 25 households a day, teaching people how to prevent disease and showing them where to go if they're sick. She builds relationships with pregnant women and encourages them to receive care at a hospital. And she checks on them after their babies are born. She's been so successful with her work that more than 90% of pregnant women in her block have given birth in a hospital. Hamida is a light to her community and represents the very best of who we are. She surely changed many lives and I'm truly honored to virtually present this award to her. As you might imagine, access to the camp where Hamida works is quite limited right now. So we were able to send another staff member in to talk to her and present this award to her. So let's take a look at the video that he was able to capture. Uh, hello, uh, this is Dr. Rebim Fanikul Islam, Surveillance and Community Health Coordinator of the Joint Ranger Response Program of the Bazaar, Bangladesh. So today I'm going to introduce you uh, with Hamida Begum, a community health worker who has been uh, recently uh, selected as the recipient of uh, Healthy Omen, World Humanitarian Omen of the year 2021. So we are heading towards our community health meeting today, to CM5. Our community health meeting place. And here is uh, Mrs. Hamida Begum. Hamida, how are you today? Oh, thank you. I'm going to ask some questions to Mrs. Hamida, and I hope she will answer these questions and uh, you will learn something more about her and her work. Thank you. কমফাবে <laughs> <laughs> তাহলে ইতার আরা নিজেরাই বলি 
Thank you, Martha and Hamida. You're two examples of women united by love for our sisters around the world. In this case, those beautiful mothers and babies in Bangladesh. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. We are thrilled to welcome multi-award winning Kiwi humanitarian photographer and storyteller, Helen Manson, this afternoon. Hello, hello, it is such a pleasure to be with you all today for the Healthy Women, Healthy World Luncheon. My name is Helen Manson and my husband Tim and I have been living and working in Uganda and East Africa for the last six years with our three kids that are four, five and seven. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, ladies, I feel like our limit was probably about two kids. I wonder if anyone else can relate to that. About 18 months ago, we moved back to our home country here in New Zealand and you're here right now in my living room, right before COVID turned the whole planet upside down. But for the last 10 years, I've actually been working as a humanitarian photographer and storyteller. I've traveled to 35 countries and worked for over 50 incredible NGOs, charities and nonprofits, both photographing and interviewing the people that benefit from those programs. My job is to bring the amazing work of these orgs to life. Organizations just like Medical Teams International. Now over the years I've been doing this, I've been genuinely scared for my life. I have cried countless tears with the people I've interviewed and I thank God every time for the privilege of doing this work. Of all the assignments I've ever done, my favorite shoots always involve women and children, medical work and disaster zones. That's a passion of mine. And despite the fact that I find the actual medical side of things incredibly queasy, what I love about shooting in clinics and in hospitals is what they represent. Because to me, they represent the business end of life. Things start and end in hospitals. It's a place full of tragedy and miracles. And God himself is at work inside. Now, just recently, my little boy actually had heart surgery here in New Zealand. And as I sat safely in that clean, air-conditioned hospital for four days, and had access to some of the best medical care in the world, I couldn't help but reflect on this talk I was due to give you. See, there's something I've learned in all my travels and the interviews I've done on the highways and byways. It's that there's really no difference in what we all want for our children, only in what we can give them. There is no us and them. There's only us. Having good medical care when you need it is one of life's most primitive and basic human rights. What a privilege it is to be here with you all, leaning into an organization doing just that, bringing dignity and hope in some of life's most vulnerable moments. So, a bit about my family. My husband, Tim, works for an organization called Tutupona that provides trauma counseling for refugees and survivors of war. 
Interesting little tidbit for you. The organization Tim works for is actually in partnership with medical teams, so it's fair to say we're kind of a fan of you guys. Our firstborn daughter, Hope, was adopted when she was just a baby by us. She has an insane memory, is yet to have an overdue library book, and recently asked me why I had a beard on my legs. Needless to say, I took a shower and a razor to those legs at once. Eva, on the other hand, is the kind of kid that spends most of her free time upside down. She loves gymnastics and giving me the eyebrow raise when she's being told off. And when her teacher asked her what I do for a job, she said, mommy shoots people in the field. We also adopted Maz as a baby. He's the kind of kid that likes to side tackle me without warning, does front flips on the trampoline, and told me a few weeks ago that, that he was very glad he was not short, like me, and Zacchaeus. Yeah. But today, I want to take you with me on a journey both behind the lens and behind the curtain of the work that Medical Teams International does. See, I've seen their work firsthand in action in multiple countries. So I'm gonna take you with me on a trip to Uganda and Tanzania, and I'm gonna tell you exactly what I saw, the all important context behind it, who I met, and do my very best to show you the realities of the absolute roller coaster the medical team's doctors, nurses, and staff get on every single day. Are you ready? Here we go. In early 2018, I was contacted by the country director of Medical Teams International in Uganda to say that he'd like me to capture the work his team were doing on the Congolese border with refugees. In the weeks that had preceded this, Congolese refugees had begun fleeing across the border as rebels started burning down houses and killing anyone who got in their way. I headed out on a tiny little five-seater airplane a couple weeks later. Now for most of the year, to give you some context, an average of 50 people would cross that border from Congo to Uganda each day. But in those last few months, a whopping 500 were crossing each day in a sudden influx. Thousands upon thousands of families would now wait up to a week at a transit center before being transported to the nearest refugee settlement about seven hours drive away. Medical Teams International were the ones that greeted them on arrival. They were, and still are, the provider of health and nutrition services for newly arriving Congolese refugees, and at the time was scrambling to scale up as fast as possible to meet that overwhelming need. On touchdown, I asked to be taken directly to the border so I could see really for myself what it was like for people arriving. And what I saw was absolutely exhausted. Men, women, teenagers, children, and the elderly coming on foot, carrying all the positions they had to their name on their backs. Many had no shoes anymore. They were thirsty, they were hungry, they were worn out. And as we say here in New Zealand, they were gutted. One by one, they were loaded like cattle into the back of a large, dusty UN truck and taken to that transit center. And as the truck rumbled down the road and I stood in the back with them, no one spoke. I was struck by the somberness of the moment as the country they had lived and built a life in went further and further out of view. Now, once we got to the reception center, they were met by medical teams and UN staff members who immediately, you know, hosed down their shoes for diseases that might have been carried in, gave them all a vaccination for measles, and they were then put into lines to register as refugees in Uganda. I saw malnutrition assessments being taken on all children, and I saw um, pregnant or lactating women being given extra special attention. Taking it all in, I slowly wandered from tent to tent, from makeshift building, temporary shelter, to permanent shelters, just observing all that was going on. I remember the first tent I walked into, I saw a woman giving birth. She was on the floor, and there was a rip in the side of the tent for impromptu airflow. She did not make a single sound. The two local medical team staff members that were there worked with the little materials they had to try and help this mum and her newborn survive. They were confident staff, calm and professional, and they had that space cleaned up after her delivery, I'm telling you, within minutes. I then watched as she lay on the dirt floor, 
with a cardboard box folded in half for a pillow. A tiny little baby sleeping peacefully under the one blanket she had to her name. I remember I walked into another tent and I saw a small commotion happening. Turns out a one week old baby had been abandoned and hadn't been fed since that night before. The baby was crying and the people that brought that baby over to the staff said the mother had left very early in the morning and had taken all of her belongings. They didn't think she'd be coming back and that hit me really hard to see that. In one of the buildings I watched as an 18 month old, too weak to stand, was weighed in at 13.6 pounds because of malnutrition. An exhausted grandmother was there with that baby and waited ever so patiently for the doctor to give her plumpy nuts. Now, plumpy nut is used as a treatment for emergency malnutrition cases. It supports rapid weight gain by giving a child lots of nutrients in a paste-like form from a tear open package. Because sometimes kids are so weak, they can't even chew. And this really simple, basic intervention can actually stop a starving child from impending illness or even death. And I remember just thinking, thank goodness they had not run out of stock. Thank goodness they were there and they were well stopped. Now, finally, I made my way over to the line for the office for the Prime Minister. The sheer numbers and the smell were overwhelming, and you'll see that in the photos. Um, it was there I spotted a group of four young boys. They were aged, I have to guess, about 6 to 12, and they were huddled together and all alone. I inquired as to their situation and discovered they had arrived really recently without parents at the camp. They were unaccompanied minors. They had come running from school, and three of them were in matching T-shirts, and it took everything in me to stop the tears from falling as I looked at how scared and vulnerable they were in that moment. Who would help them get food tonight? Who would give them a blanket to sleep under? Who would kiss them as they went to sleep that night? The local staff worked with the UN to find a foster grandma for the interim. You need to know that medical teams is large and powerful in Uganda. It numbered 1,500 staff throughout the country when I was shooting these images. And most of those staff were on the front lines of the refugee crisis, whether that was on the border of Congo or South Sudan. And I actually saw their work in both places. They were efficient and effective, and I can tell you they had their work down to a really fine art. The staff were caring and they were kind, whilst also being firm about procedures and practices just being at that highest standard they could be in that unique situation. The context within which they were working was all consuming and exhausting, and most staff were working long days. As I left, I remember feeling so grateful that the people coming over to the border were falling into the arms of an integrous, honest organization like medical teams, and that they in turn were doing the best they could to keep refugee families alive and healthy. Most recently, in March 2019, I was invited by medical teams to photograph their work in the hospitals within the refugee camps of Tanzania, near the border of Burundi. This was one of my all-time favorite trips I ever did for you guys, and the most efficient way to visit that remote site was also to arrive by a UN plane and drive very tiny UN planes and drive many hours to the border, a couple hours, um, and then a couple hours onto the camp. So, of course, day one, my favorite, because we got to spend it with newborn babies, and many of the women were so excited to see foreigners that they invited us to photograph their babies and get quite close while doing it. I do remember at one point sharing a bed with a fellow female and had to smile at how beautiful the spirit of sisterhood is even though we didn't speak the same language, and even though we were both a million miles from home. Now, I always like to take my Polaroid camera on these trips, and on this occasion, it felt so special to be given the incredible privilege of taking their child's first ever photograph, before then giving it to their brave, strong mama. The room that I was in was warm with these women, the place was clean, care was taken, Babies were being loved on. I remember on one of the days I spotted through my lens a little boy and his mother in line waiting to see the doctor. They stood out to me 
because of the beautifully tender way that mum was holding his little body. She had such a gentleness to her. And through an interview, we found out that her three-year-old son was very ill. He was unable to walk and I saw him struggling to breathe. After seeing the doctor and being admitted to the wards, we later found out he'd been diagnosed with severe malaria and pneumonia and his treatment began. We moved then later through to the women's ward and I saw nine-year-old Kentia. I remember she was lying on a hospital bed while her mother wept over her frail body. She shook rapidly and her eyelids barely opened. And when they did, her little eyes would roll back in her head. I found myself in that moment desperately praying that the medication entering her veins through the IV drip would work faster. No child should suffer this way and no mum should ever have to watch that. We learned from the nurse that she also had been struck by another acute, severe case of malaria. Later that same afternoon as we were leaving, I noticed another very sick little girl. She was about eight years old on an oxygen tank. And as we left the camp that night, I was scared, not knowing if these three children would make it through the night. In the morning, I could literally hardly wait to get back to the hospital to check on yesterday's patients. And as I walked into the pediatric ward, the first thing I noticed was that the three-year-old boy from yesterday was now sitting up. Later that day, I even saw him outside and he was drinking water from a soda bottle all by himself and looking very pleased about it. The other thing that I saw was the nine-year-old girl whose mother had been weeping over her. She was now sitting up too. And her recovery was slower, but progress was being made. I breathed a huge sigh of relief seeing that. And then I looked to my left and there lay the other sweet little girl from yesterday. She now had her eyes closed and her mum and her auntie were trying to feed her whatever they could. She was attached to oxygen and that wasn't looking good. All of a sudden, she started making a noise I'll never forget. And the next thing I knew, the doctor placed his hand on my back and whispered, it's time to go. I held myself together until I walked out into the sunlight and then I completely lost it. Sobs came up from the deepest possible place. I will never, ever forget that moment. Once I had composed myself, we decided to go check in on some of the mothers that we'd spoken to in labor the day prior. I walked in the door. I was given a pair of gumboots and told to head into the labor room. And within minutes, I watched twins come into the world. The twins were a surprise. The mother had no idea. I took two short iPhone videos while I was there. One shows the twins a few hours after they were born and one shows the traditional way a mum leaves her, leaves the hospital with her newborn baby. And I want to show you those two videos right now. to wrestle with both the tragedy of death and the celebration of new life within 10 minutes of each other. But I guess that is the business end of hospitals and that is the truth of what medical teams does. Just when this world seems ruined beyond repair, a baby is born. Before this hospital and the many others now in the camps were there, Lives that could have been saved were lost for stupid reasons, like medication for malaria wasn't available. Now, that's not the case. If someone gets a treatable illness like malaria or pneumonia, 
they have a good chance of survival and the drugs that they'll need to help them. You know, ladies, I count it as one of the most incredible privileges to be asked to help bring these stories to life, to shine a light on some of the darkest places in our world and to share the work of remarkable NGOs like medical teams, giving everything they've got. I have no answers for you or myself as to why things are the way they are. I have hope though. I see it in the faces of staff committed to working around that clock to bring healing. I see it in the relief on a mother's face as she's given medicine to care for her precious baby. The simplicity and the dignity of that is not lost on me. I also see it in the bouncy nature of little children running around after homemade soccer balls because the care they received at a medical team's clinic was the difference between life and death for them last week. Please know, please know that your love, action, donations and prayers for these people is felt and makes an impact beyond what you could ever, ever imagine. You know, there's a quote that reads, sometimes I'd like to ask God why he allows poverty, suffering and injustice when he could do something about it. But I'm afraid he'd ask me the same question. I think about this quote all the time. Today, we're here as part of a women's luncheon called Healthy Women, Healthy World. And I can't help but think about the fact that 50% of the planet are women. And a good proportion of those women are wealthy, healthy, educated, and safe. And the rest aren't. I believe with all my heart, there's got to be a greater connect between us and them in so many areas. For starters, there is no us and them. There's only us. I hate that I can have this great life and another woman with three kids just like mine will struggle all her life. I want to do absolutely everything I can to support other women and children. And I think the very fact that each and every single one of you have come to this luncheon today tells me you think about that too. The work medical teams is doing through Healthy Women, Healthy World is one very, very important way we can do that. Because when we give, we say to another mama that we see you, we hear you, and we might not live next to you or even in the same country as you, but we're going to stand alongside other women and build a circle of protection around you and your family. Now in Tanzania, you're helping mothers and babies survive birth and it's working. Your gift to this program helps make sure pregnant women receive the care they deserve. It ensures they're able to give birth in a clinic with the help of a skilled birth attendant, even during a global pandemic like COVID-19. And if something goes wrong, they'll have access to emergency care, like a C-section. You do that when you give to this program. Once their babies are born, you help mums learn the importance of breastfeeding. You provide vaccines and treatments for pneumonia, malaria, and diarrhea. You've enabled doctors to check for malnutrition and supply nutritious food so children can grow up healthy. And as we saw in Uganda, your support enables medical teams to be the first people on the front lines as refugees cross the border. How beautiful is that? It enables them to provide a health screening and vaccinations to families on arrival into a transit center. And it provides for the continuation of their care through the staffing of clinics and the stocking of really important medicines after those families move from that border to the actual refugee settlement where they'll end up staying. Now, before I started doing humanitarian photography and storytelling, I can tell you that my honest temptation was to imagine that people who endured such things like what we've talked about today on the news were somehow different to me. Maybe somehow they don't feel things like I do. Maybe these mums get used to it. Maybe they expect less, care less, want less, need less, or even feel less. But painfully, over time, I have come to see that they are exactly like me. And what they endure as mothers living in poverty is in no way easier for them just because they're poor. Today, we invite you to join us on a journey to bring healing to a hurting world. 
We invite you into a story of an organization that is packing a serious punch. We invite you into a community of women helping other women and the little ones they love too. And if you'd be open to joining us, you can do that today with a special one-time donation. I also hear there are a couple of generous matches as well to help your gifts go even further. Ladies, I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, it has been such a wonderful privilege to speak to you all this afternoon. I'm genuinely really grateful that each and every single one of you has taken the time to lean in, to listen, and engage with these critical issues of our time. Our womanhood unites us. And this Kiwi girl in New Zealand on my couch, thanks you for caring and thanks you so much for coming. Onwards and upwards to healthy women and a healthy world. God bless you. Oh, thank you so much for sharing with us, Helen. It got emotional in this studio. Maybe you have some tissue next to you too. Wow. Wow, what a journey. Now, as you consider your donation level, I have an incredible opportunity to share with you. Deb and Mark Perry would like to inspire and challenge you to give big. Deb is a member of the Healthy Women, Healthy World Leadership Team, and she and Mark have seen firsthand what a difference their gifts make. Every gift you give at the $1,000 level will be doubled today, up to $75,000. Wow, this is incredible. Deb says, let's do this on behalf of all the women and the mothers around the world. I know we can reach this $200,000 goal. Also, we have a special offer for you. This, the first, oh, excuse me, the first 100 gifts of $500 or more given in this event will receive this beautiful limited edition unframed signed poster by today's keynote speaker, Helen Manson. Here's what Helen had to say about this beautiful picture. A little girl stands in the opening of a tent in the middle of a refugee transit center on the border of Congo and Uganda. She stands on a sack filled with dirt that is being used for a step. Inside this tent, her family and many others are waiting to see medical team staff for treatment. Having arrived as refugees from Congo days prior, this pop-up medical tent is their only chance for free health care. Can you even imagine? I mean, after hearing Helen's presentation, this, this picture is just so much more poignant. We know what it means. If you're watching this live stream on your Better Unite page, you can just click on the level you wish to give at, the, uh, give at on the right-hand side of your screen. Every gift at any level is greatly appreciated, but let me share a little bit about what each of the levels are going to do. $150 can provide medication to help 680 women and children heal from malaria in Uganda. $250 can ship $11,500 worth of life-saving medical supplies to people in crisis. $500 can help build five latrines to help reduce illness and keep the water supply safe for a family in Guatemala. $1,000 can provide the supplies needed to help 125 pregnant mothers in need of emergency C-sections to safely deliver their babies, something we may take for granted here. And remember, this level is matched, so you can actually help twice as many mothers. You may also be trying to remember how to give, since there are many ways. So to let me remind you, we have a few different options. Uh, you might have received a text message that includes your unique donation link. Follow that link to our login and receive access to the giving page. And if you're watching on another streaming site, you can text CHANGE to 844-297-2727. If you wish to give through your donor advised fund or send a check, please take a moment to call us now at 503-624-6615 or email us at events at medicalteams.org and someone will help you. Now, if you've already donated, your confirmation and receipt will be sent by the end of the day and we thank you for your generous gift. Gifts of any size are appreciated and truly make a life-saving difference. And I sure hope we are on our way to meeting that $200,000 goal.
While you're making your gifts, we have one more special video to share. As Martha said earlier, we are living through some challenging times and medical team staff on the front lines witness a lot of pain. But they also see hope because of the care they can provide thanks to people like you. Here's a video from medical team staff telling us where they see hope in their work. Hi, I'm Naruma Silinda. Hi everyone, I'm Priscilla. Habari, naitwa Eda Ndabila. Mi nombre es Gloria Rojas. Hi, I am Maisa. Hola, mi nombre es Aracelis. Hi, my name is Byron. Mi nombre es Juan Pablo Rios. Hello everyone, I'm Francis Bagonza. My name is Theodore Rafael. My name is Sarah Rollins. What gives me hope about the work we do at medical teams is the smile we receive from the refugees after our direct intervention or leading them to the services. We created a trustful relation between us and them and a lot of refugees feel free and comfortable talking to us. What gives me hope is when I see smiles on patients' faces when their health has improved because of our interventions. Lo que me da esperanza de trabajar en MTI es que nos brinda herramientas para poder cumplir con el mandato que nos dio Jesús de ayudar al prójimo en este momento tan difícil que estamos viviendo. Kinacho nipa tumaini kufanya kazi na shirika la medical teams ni kuona watoto wanazaliwa vizuri na mazingira salama. What gives me hope is when a client expresses their gratitude to the medical team when their health has improved. Me da esperanza en relación al apoyo que brindamos ver a madres valientes y felices de aprender y aplicar el cuidado de la salud de niños y niñas. And what gives me hope about the support we provide to faith communities is that they are getting involved in the health of mothers and children and so generate healthy community. Lo que nos da esperanza del trabajo que hacemos con Medical Teams es la posibilidad de todos los días eh, ayudar con un granito de arena a mejorar las condiciones de vida de poblaciones vulnerables, de comunidades migrantes eh, en nuestro territorio. Siempre lo hacemos con esperanza, lo hacemos con respeto, con transparencia y con empatía. What gives me hope is when patients Trust me to keep them safe. What gives me hope uh, with the work we do, we create a better world and a healthy future for people of concern we serve. What gives me hope about the work we do at medical teams is knowing that we are not choosing to do work because it is easy, but are going where the need is the greatest. Wow, Martha, it's so inspiring to hear messages of hope from people working in some of the most difficult places around the world. So true, and I am so proud of our staff. They not only provide life-saving medical care to people in crisis, but they offer love and comfort to each and every person that they care for. Absolutely. Okay, I think we should check in on our gifts and I see know. how we're doing. Where uh, are we? Well, quick, before we do anything else, we just want to remind you that your $1,000 gift level today will be matched up to 75,000. So if you've already donated, also remember that a confirmation and receipt will be sent to you by the end of the day. Okay. Uh, ooh, $150,000 plus $5. <laughs> Wow, we're almost there, yes, Catherine. we're almost there. We just need to get to that $200,000 mark, and I think we're on our way. So thankful for everybody who's given today. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that phone number, again, if you need help, is 503-624-6615. Uh, should we give some shout-outs to some of our donors today? Uh, Patricia Reeser, wow. $10,000 earlier this morning. We oh. love Patricia Reeser. Oh my goodness, thank you, Pat. <laughs> and Linda Andrews, $500. Thank you so much, Linda. Carrie Tong, $1,000. And remember, since it's a $1,000 gift, that will be matched. Uh, Peg Chamberlain, $15,000. Oh my goodness. Wow. Thank you, thank you, everybody. That's right. And we just wanna see that, that thermometer going up just a little bit more. We're so close to getting to that target. Yes, okay, $150,155. So just in the last few seconds, keep those donations coming. 
Oh, gosh, I just want to thank you guys for joining us this afternoon. We hope that you've been moved today. I know we were just bawling back here. How Lots could you tissues. not? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Remember that you have the power to heal women and children around the world who are hurting and alone. Make sure also to follow us on social media and join our Healthy Women, Healthy World Facebook group. Our events, there are many, are posted on this group. Also, please consider taking time to continue learning with us. Our book club on October 20th at 7 p.m. will be focusing on a discussion around The Moment of Lift by Melinda Gates. Keep your eyes open for a registration email. Also, check tomorrow's email for upcoming events and details on today's Final totals, Martha, I hope that we will have met that $200,000 goal. I'm sure we're gonna get there. Yes. I've got faith. Yes, so do I. <laughs> we truly appreciate that you chose to spend time with us today. Thank you everyone and have a wonderful afternoon.